All right, so we, we tend to celebrate leadership. Uh, we do that in sport, we do that in politics, in social movements, um, and in uh, um, war conflicts. And we tend to uh, create the impression that leadership is what you need to get you through some difficult times. So we uh, romanticize the idea of a General George Washington crossing the Delaware uh, to attack the Haitians overnight, defeat them, and change this, the course of the Revolutionary War. Um, but that doesn't tell the real story. That is misleading. It's actually detrimental for the la long term of a community in particular. Uh, so what this doesn't tell is the story of all the other people who were doing work for this to actually happen. Uh, this is the um, USS Lexington. It's a ship that was challenging the British uh, Navy in order to bring supplies to the uh, Revolutionary Army. Uh, when you emphasize too much leadership, you don't take into account the work that goes into the uh, foot troops that are actually doing the real part of the work. Um, uh, so essentially, leadership is overrated and is misleading and is uh, detrimental to the long-term health of the community. Um, so because what happens in the dynamics is that when you have a group of people, when you elevate the leader, then you also diminish everybody else. So you have somebody that is more visible, and then suddenly everybody else is a little bit on the back. Uh, the leadership, uh, the leader creates the followers, or the mentality of the follower. And uh, it makes those followers mushy, and slow, and a little bit lazy, and a little bit dependent. Um, it disables the uh, critical thinking of those who are being led. And uh, Noam Chosky warns us against it. The admiration towards the leader is actually a weakness of the ones who are being followed, or the ones who are following him. Um, so the, the worst part of leadership is that leaves the community members off the hook. It's not their problem. The leader will take care of that. He will tell us what to do. It's not my problem. I just need to wait until I receive instructions, and then I will do whatever he says. And the worst part of this is that makes the community vulnerable to a variety of problems. For example, uh, decapitation attacks, <laughs> alien abductions, <laughs> vampires, zombies, and the worst enemy of all, the city boss. So what we have to learn of this is that instead of creating that uh, uh, environment of the leader and the followers, we have to educate and cultivate the characteristic of everybody else in the community. Everybody is helping to push. And the leader should be unnecessary. The best leader is the one that is never noticed. Um, you want to create this uh, community where there is no uh, hierarchical uh, structure of command and control. Everybody will be able to take over whatever needs to be done, and things will get done. Uh, so that's kind of the moment of saying is that instead of cultivating that leadership, um, uh, we should have um, this environment where the most skilled leader is the one that is not being noticed. It's behind the scenes. It's actually helping everybody else uh, to uh, do what they need to do. So when things are done the, the perfect way, people say we did it. It was not the leader who tells us what to do. It's not uh, George Washington who can help us um, or tell us uh, how to cross the river. Um, then you have a very uh, stable, very strong community because everything will be done and, and nobody is indispensable. So this is Peter Block. He has this great advice. Stop being so helpful. Let everybody else do something and uh, take charge of what they need to do in their communities. Thank you.